Welcome. I'm Dr. Kathleen Walsh. I'm a clinical instructor with the Department of Family Medicine at University of Wisconsin. And I'm Dr. Melissa Stiles, Associate Professor with the University of Wisconsin. And we're here to do a fan medcast today on diagnosis and assessment of dementia. Dr. Stiles, in the office setting, how do you diagnose dementia? Well, this is, you know, it's difficult. I use the DSM-4 criteria, so there are three things, basically. You need, number one, memory impairment, right? You're talking about dementia. Two, you need impairment in another cognitive area. And three, impairment is to the point that it interferes with either social or occupational functioning. There are major types of dementia. I know there's like four major types, but there's several different subtypes. What do we really want to focus on? Well, you really want to focus Alzheimer's is going to be the biggest percentage. Alzheimer's followed by vascular dementia, Lewy body, frontal temporal dementia, and then there's also a mixed dementia, which could be a mixture of any of the above. Are there distinct characteristics of those that I need to be aware of when I'm looking at patients? Yes, I think when you look at Alzheimer's, classically it's slowly progressive. It often involves initially inability to lay down new memory and visual spatial skills. Lewy body dementia is also gradual, but it's hallmarked by visual hallucinations and Parkinsonian symptoms. Frontal temporal dementia, again, is gradual, but because of the frontal lobes, you'll see odd behavioral and personality changes. You know, I worry myself because I've had family members who have had dementia with my grandparents and a couple of uncles and aunts. What are the warning signs for dementia? There are many warning signs. If you have had word-finding problems, losing things, getting lost, not able to carry out usual tasks either at home or on the job, definitely are warning signs for dementia. You know, I've seen some patients that I wonder if they've been severely depressed with either mild or moderate depression versus dementia. How do I tell the difference? This is difficult. Often the two coexist. But in general, depression is going to be more of an acute onset. You'll have apathy, loss of concentration, impairment of both short and long-term memory, well, with dementia, short-term memory is initially impaired. So when I look at a patient and I think that, or I'm evaluating a patient and they may have dementia, I know I need to worry about other conditions to rule out before I give them the diagnosis of dementia. What are those? Well, first, you want to rule out delirium and all of the things that can cause delirium. But also, you want to think about vitamin deficiencies, particularly vitamin B12, endocrine problems such as hypothyroidism, other neurological conditions, could this be normal pressure hydrocephalus? Do they have a disturbance in continence? If they had a history of a head injury um, or an anticoagulant that you want to think of a subdural, do they have any Parkinson's symptoms that you want to think about Parkinson's disease? Could they have hypoxia? And also, want to screen for alcohol and drug abuse. So when a patient comes into the office setting, what do we need to do as physicians for the evaluation? Well, initially, history. Interviewing both the patient and the family is very important. On physical, you want to look for signs of endocrine disease, cardiovascular disease, neurological conditions as I just mentioned, gait disturbance, tremor, focal deficits. Do they have hearing or vision loss that's affecting uh, their ability to understand? And signs of abuse. I know there are several tests, i.e., you can do uh, uh, visual spatial testing, questionnaires in the room. How is the mini mental status exam used? And do I need to worry about those patients with either a high school education or postgraduate degrees? And how do I grade them? Yeah, again, a good question. The mini mental status examination is a good starting point, but it does have its limitations. So if you have someone with higher education, you may want to consider more formal neuropsychological testing. The mini mouse status examination is a good starting point to assess orientation, memory, concentration, and visual spatial skills. Now, I can do the mini mental status exam on the first visit and then subsequent visits after that to uh, monitor. Some people will use it to monitor. It's estimated that with Alzheimer's dementia, there's a drop of about two to three points on the mini mental status per year. Are there any laboratory uh, exams or values that I need to obtain? There's really no clear consensus. The American Academy of Neurology recommends only a TSH and B12. But you also may consider a chemistry panel, including glucose, calcium, and the electrolytes. And depending on the patient's history and risk factors, 
consider Lyme titer, VDRL, HIV, heavy metal screen, folic acid, sed rate, and a complete blood cell count. Do I need to schedule an imaging study, such as a CT or an MRI, right away, or do I wait? What do I do? Again, there's no clear consensus. American Academy of Neurology does recommend imaging with a CT or MRI. I favor the second Canadian Consensus Conference on Dementia recommendations, which really bases it on risk factors. So doing imaging if they're less than 60, if it's an atypical or rapid cognitive decline, if they had a recent head injury or an anticoagulant that you're thinking about a subdural, do they have localized neurological signs, gait disturbance, or urinary incontinence. So now I have a patient that I've diagnosed with dementia. Is there a particular way that I should address the family and the patient to break the news? You really want to break the news in stages, like giving any bad diagnosis. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much information. Be aware of their reaction to this devastating diagnosis and then to discuss treatment options. Does every patient need to be referred to a specialist? No, I don't believe so. I refer if the diagnosis is uncertain, I want to proceed with further neuropsychological testing. If it's unusual or a complicated course, if it's a young onset or the disease is progressing more rapidly, or if the patients request a second opinion or inclusion in a study. So as a primary care provider, what are your take-home points to the rest of us? I think that primary care physicians need to be able to diagnose dementia, the early signs are recognizable, and that proactive management can help the patient and family anticipate what to expect. Great. Thank you for your time, Dr. Stiles. You're welcome.